Okay, everybody, this is chapter 11, section four. This is dealing with the volume of prisms and cylinders, okay? So uh, the formulas for both of these are pretty much the same. Um, just a couple of things you gotta remember here, okay? So let's get going with these postulates up on top. Uh, this one, uh, the volume of a cube, uh, you know, a cube's gonna be a three-dimensional figure. It's really a square, so all the sides are the same. So to get the volume here, you could take the side length and cube it, and that's just side times side times side, okay? Uh, the volume congruence postulate, we don't really use this one, but two polyhedra, so three-dimensional figures that are regular, if they are congruent, then they'll have the same volume. I, I'm pretty sure that's not rocket science right there, okay? Second one, um, the volume of a solid is the sum of the volumes of all of its non-overlapping parts. So, that, that's something you'll probably get into like on a test question. So the uh, idea would be like a, an ice, ice cream cone. Um, the ice cream, let's assume that it's a sphere, so a three-dimensional ball. Um, and then you also have it on a cone. You could find the volume of the cone. So I could take the volume of the ice cream, this ball part of it, and then take the volume of the cone, and I could add those together, okay? So that, that's the stuff you'll have to be able to do. Okay, down here, uh, Cavalieri's principle, I believe he is Italian, uh, might have been Spanish, anyway, he came up with this principle, if two solids have the same height and the same cross section, so we did that last section, then they'll have the same volume, and we really don't get into that principle too much, okay? So then down here, uh, for the theorem six and seven, the volume of a prism and a cylinder, it's going to have the same uh, formula, the area of the base times the height. So remember, B is, capital B is the area of whatever the base of the figure might be, okay? So for a rectangular prism, it would be a rectangle, or it could be a square, a cube, but we have that other one we talked about a second ago. Um, if you have a circle, remember the area of a circle is going to be pi r squared, and if you have a triangular prism, the triangle is the base. So remember to get the area of a triangle is going to be the base times height divided by two. Okay, so you got those things you got to think of to get B and then multiply it by the height H. Remember height is the line that connects bases together or the base that you're using connects it with the other base. Okay, it's like a can of soup. You know, at the bottom and the top are both going to be circles. The length or height of the can is going to be the line connecting the two bases. Okay, so let's get going here. Um, we start off with the triangular prism. So we want to find the area of the base, and that's going to be the triangle. So we're going to do that. And all the sides are the same. Okay, so this is going to be 1.5. I'm going to have to go use my special right triangle 30 60 90 to get the height okay so I, I divide this in half this is going to be the short leg all these angles here were 60 okay so this one ends up being our 30 okay so this this uh, height is going to be the long leg i'm going to get it by multiplying the short leg by the square root of three and that's what's going to get me there okay so the base is going to be 1.5 square root of 3 times the 1.5 base all divided by 2, okay? So I'll let you go. Go ahead and multiply that out. That's a 1 out of 7, sorry. Multiply that out. Let's see what we get for the area of our base. So, you know, hit pause and do, you know, do your math. You don't have to wait for me to do it. Do all my math on top, and I believe I get, I'm doing some rounding here. I'm getting 7.8 divided by 2, and that gets me approximately 3.9. So there's the area of my base. So the volume is going to be the area of my base. 3.9, sorry, times my height. Remember, Height is the line that's connecting the two bases, and I, it's going to be five in this case. 
And so my volume then is going to be approximately 19.5. And they gave me units as being feet. So feet, in this case, we're finding volume. So we're going to find it as cubic or cubed. Okay. So there you go. Okay. Uh, in example B, this is a cylinder, so I got to get the area of the base, and the and the area of the base is going to be pi r squared, and so my radius is this three. Okay, so the base is going to be I'm going to use three point one four times the radius is three squared. Okay, let you do the math there on that. And I'm going to get approximately 28.3. Okay, for the area of my base. The volume is going to be the area of the base times the height. So I got the base 28.3, that's rounded. And my uh, height is going to be 4. So remember, this is your height. And then my volume is going to be approximately 113.2 and it's going to be also feet cubed all right another another way to write it is 113.2 cubic feet so cubic sometimes is uh abbreviated CU and then also B. Okay, so I, I don't care which way you write it. I think I, I tend to kind of stick with this as my notation, okay? So uh, hopefully, you know, the triangular one over here, going back to 30, 60, 90, we've been doing that to you guys all chapter, and we did it last chapter. Stuff you got to remember, I warned you about that way back in chapter eight. So we've got to know that stuff, okay? Um, and then just knowing that both of these formulas for these different figures are basically the same thing, just your bases are a little bit different, okay? The other thing too, I just want to uh, say this. I'm using 3.14 as pi, okay? And you do have a pi button on your calculator. Most of you guys, that, that number goes out to, I think, the eighth or ninth place. And if you use that button and not 3.14, our answers are going to be different. When, when the radius, like in this last one, was three, the difference in our answers are not going to be that great. But when the radius gets bigger or the height is bigger, that just the the difference in our answers are going to increase by a lot more and it's not wrong but I, just just for me i i'm using 3.14 because i'm doing it at the board i'm not using a calculator all the time just an easier number to use and i'm also rounding everything basically to the 10th place so once again that will cause us to have a little bit different answer we just need to be in the same ballpark when we do those okay all right, so here we're going to be solving for x. Um, they tell me that the volume of this is going to be 100, okay? So they want me to get what is x. So uh, let's see, for me to get the volume of a cube was going to be side cubed, cubed, sorry. They give me the volume as being 100 cubed. So that means I got to take the cube root of 100. So a lot of you guys in your calculator, um, you have a button that looks like this. Okay. Or, it, or my, at least in my calculator, it, it doesn't have a three, but it has an X. And I can put any number in. What I have to do is I have to put that number in first. So this time I want to take the cube root of something. So I have to put in the number three. And then I'm going to hit second. And then I hit that button. And then I put in the number that I want to take the cube root of. 
So I want to take the cube root of 100. So I want you to see how your calculator works. Um, we're, they're all a little bit different. If you have the ones that we had in our classroom, um, that's kind of how those ones work. Okay, so give that one a shot. Okay, so hopefully you guys were able to kind of figure that one out. This should be a relatively small number. It ends up being approximately an x is about 4.6. So that's the side length of that cube. Okay. All right. I'm going to put this down out of the way. Okay, here we go. Okay, this one, they give me a cylinder and they want me to find the volume of the, or I'm sorry, the radius of that. Okay, so let's just go back and we're going to kind of build out the volume formula. Okay, so remember the volume is the base times the height. In this case, the base is a uh, circle. Okay, so remember that's going to be pi r squared. So I'm changing b into that times h. So I've changed my volume a little bit to help me with that. All right. They tell me that the volume is 4,561 and it equals pi. I'm going to change that to 3.14. I don't know the radius, so we'll keep that as r squared. And they did give me the height, so that's 12. Okay? So just taking the formula, breaking it down into the pieces that we need, you know, and it. It's not a hard problem. We just got to think a little bit and be able to kind of get through it, all right? So now that we've done all that, you know, we should be able to kind of figure this out. What, what I did was I multiplied pi times 12. And then because this is all being multiplied on the right-hand side, I divided it into both sides, okay? So um, that would, might help you a little bit. Uh, pi times 12 is about 37.7, and I divided that into 4,561, 4, and I, I ran out of room, sorry, I'm come up here, okay, and then when I did that, I got approximately x squared is equal to about 121, and I left it at pi as pi as that. Okay, so now what I want to do is take the, to solve for x, I want to take the square root of both sides, and I get x is approximately 11. And x represented the radius, so 11 meters was the radius. So working the, the problem backwards, basically, is what we're doing there. So that's a test question kind of right there, okay? Okay. So let's do this problem. This is a really good problem. This, this kind of problem shows up a lot. I have a, a cylinder shark tank that has a diameter of 40 feet. That should ring some bells here. Diameter, and I don't really work with diameter when we're doing this stuff. I work with radiuses. So I want to think that the radius here is going to be 20. Okay, so... You know, that's just thinking ahead a little bit, you know, what do I need to do these volume and surface areas? I'm always, always using radius. So I, I'm going to change that. And it's 23 feet deep. How many gallons of water are needed to fill the tank? So really gallons of water would be the volume of the tank, okay? And they, they're telling me that down here, one gallon is equal to... 0.1337 cubic feet. And we're going to keep using that. Okay, so let's just first off find the volume. Um, let's, and I'm just going to kind of quickly draw this tank. It's a cylinder tank. So, you know, two circles, top and bottom. And there's the depth, 23 feet. Okay, they give me a diameter of 40. But remember, I don't, I don't really want that. I want a radius of 20, okay? So let's go ahead and find the volume of that. First off, i got to get the area of the base. So that's going to be pi times the radius squared. 
and I believe that gets me about 1,256 square feet. But then I got to get the volume of this. So I'm going to take that and multiply it by the height. Okay. So a lot of you guys are pretty smart, or you know, you get you, you can figure these formulas out a little bit. I don't really have to do that. I, I could have done this times 23 way up here. You know, that's kind of showing you what I did back up here. I changed that volume with a cylinder to the base is pi r squared. Okay, so those are things you kind of make a little bit of a shortcut. And so the volume here is going to be about 288,000. I'm sorry, 28,888, sorry. Okay, now that's an approximation. I'm going to go back to, I use pi, or I use 3.14. I really didn't use pi. If you use the pi button, that number is going to be different, and it's going to be relatively significant because now that's a huge number, and the, and the, more, the bigger my numbers get, the difference between using the pi button and just 3.14 is going to get magnified, okay? But that's what uh, I'm using, okay? I'm going to take now this 28,888, and I'm going to multiply it, or divide it, I'm sorry, by because I could have set up a proportion here. I could set this to one gallon and 0.1337 as a fraction and put 28,888 um, over X, and that would be able to get that. So really, I'm going to divide that. I'm going to get to about 216,065.8 gallons. Okay, I'm sorry, this was the cubic feet that I found. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm gonna get that many gallons in that tank. Okay, so if you guys have been to one of these aquariums with that, there you go. Lots of lot of water. All right. Okay, so we just have a couple of extra problems to do this. So remember the volume is going to be the area of the base times the height. Uh, the base is going to be this 10 and 5 and 10 and 5. Okay, so remember the area of the base is going to be the length times the width. So, and then the height is going to be that. Okay, so I'll let you guys go ahead and do the math on that one. So you can hit pause and then go ahead and do that. Okay, so there you go. The area of the base was 50, um, and the height was 6, so 50 times 6 gives me 300 inches cubed. Okay, so now we got a cylinder. Uh, the volume is going to be the area of the base. So remember, the base is going to be pi r squared times h. So why don't we try to do the problem this way? Make a little bit of a shortcut. Don't find the base, and then go and multiply it. I mean, we're doing the same thing, but go ahead and uh, convert pi to 3.14. Got the radius is 4, and they're telling me that the height is 7. So why don't you guys hit pause, and you go ahead and do that. Okay, so there you go. I changed pi to 3.14. The radius was 4. The height was 7. Multiplied all that out. And I believe I get about 351.7 inches cubed. Okay. So remember again, too, I'm rounding. I'm using pi. My answer might be a little bit different if you're using different things and depending on how you're rounding. Um, so as long as we're close, you know, we just it's the process we got to understand, okay? All right. 
think that's probably it. So um, hopefully you do a good job on your uh, homework assignment was for this. Uh, got to use your calculator, got to identify what your base is, know how to find the area of that base, okay?